Okay, today's walk is at Colebrook. It's our one significant holding in Tewkesbury Township. Majority of the property is used for agriculture, but there are perimeter trails around many of the fields, as well as one small woodlot. So to give ourselves a change of habitat and hopefully new things to talk about, we'll take a walk here and see what we can find. Right off the bat by the parking lot is a sign of human disturbance, um, a non-native on the fringe of the grass line, um, commonly seen along roadways. But this is chicory, one of the wildflowers that are here at Cole Brooks. Um, there are some myths and lores you can read about, but again, as an environmental standard, it is a sign of human disturbance, human intrusion upon a native habitat. Okay, the scat in front of you, because of the tapered tip on the one edge that you can see, and the fact that it's broken, um, that there's actually some consistency to the interior, tells me that this scat is coyote. Um, you can see the size. It's actually about equivalent in roundness to my thumb. So I would say it's just probably an under a one inch roundness. Um, but again, unlike dogs who are fed um, the dog food from our stores, coyotes are eating wild game and other things. They are technically an omnivore. They will eat some berries and nuts if need be. But there is actually... Um, items in the interior besides the fur. I'll try to break one apart to show you what I'm referring to and you can see that there's other things and it's not the mass that our pet dogs actually will excrete. So again, based on the size, the width, and the tapered tip, this scat probably placed in the middle of the service road is our coyote friend. Another flower that's been found along the edge of the cornfield is this white one in front of us. Um, it is a cousin to Morning Glory, but is called Field Bindweed. It is another indicator of a human-made environment living on the fringe of the cornfield. It also does grow as a vine like the Morning Glories. Okay, you'll actually see here two corners of a cornfield coming together. But then there's this vegetative strip in between. This is not just a trail that was forgotten about and not mowed. This is actually a agricultural aid called a berm. The purpose of a berm is to put a barrier between um, to fields so that when rain runoff occurs and the fields have been cut, this vegetative berm acts as a barrier to the flowing water and slows the speed of the water down, allows it to be reabsorbed into the ground. So it's actually an aid to control erosion with the agricultural field. So again, it's not a trail, but it's actually a aid to take care and preserve ground soil in the park. So when you do see it and it's still um, early in the growth for the season, berms are not meant to be walked on because you will compact them, you will um, interrupt or maybe break some of the vegetation and then they won't be as effective when they need to do their job. I'm at the null point in Colebrook, and as you can see, 
there is a nice panoramic view since it's not a woodland um, ecosystem. Um, it's part of the highlands of New Jersey being here in Tewksbury. Um, it also makes for a good observation point. Um, I have seen many species of birds here in Colebrook. Because of being high and having the open sky, um, it's primarily a interest for me, particularly for the fall with hawk migration, because you get such a panoramic view. But also with the fields being cut, many of the fall migrants will come in, take advantage of the agricultural fields being cut as stubble to forage, pick up new grit. Um, so again, some rare sparrows have been seen here as well as um, northern shrike, uh, um, northern harriers, all on the ground during those seasons. All right, this is another shot of scat. It may look like something I once talked about, but it's actually misleading. This is not bear scat. This is actually deer scat. If you look at it, it will break up and there's actually evidence of being little pellets to the sides of it. Um, bear scat isn't going to be showing these type of traits. Um, it's also all organic. There's no berries or nuts or other things in the interior that bear might eat. So again, you do need to pay a little bit to the texture of scat if you're trying to do an ID. <clears throat> Roll it around with a stick so you see all sides of it. And again, if you look down here at this piece, you'll see that there is evidence of actually just a massing occurring, emerging of the various pellets because it's been rained on. Um, it just looks like a giant um, mass that might come from a bear because it has merged into one element because of the impacting of rain on top of it. But again, this is actually deer scat that's here in Colebrook. All right, just by looking at what's in the picture, you may know what it is already. But hidden in one of the hedgerows is native blackberry. Um, these have not been doing well because they've been out competed in many locations by multiflora rose or Japanese wineberry or other exotics. But there are a few places in county parks where you can still find them. Um, because people do pick berries, like wine berries and blackberries in the parks, I'm actually not going to tell you exactly where I am. It's why I'm giving you such a close-up. Because again, berries in the county parks, the primary use of them should be by the wildlife for their native food sources. So I'm not trying to promote the stealing of food from our wildlife but I'm not going to deny that I haven't picked a few myself to enjoy the berries as well. But again, a native blackberry um, in Colebrook. Okay, about three quarters of the way straight in on the main service road, trail, whatever you call it, into Colebrook is this retention pond. It is man-made. It does have a drain. But for me, it's always a guaranteed stop. This is really the only permanent water in the park. So it's actually a magnet for wildlife. Right now, the main activity is various species of dragonflies are flying around, getting ready to... Um, possibly mate. There's green and bullfrog activity calling. 
Um, I've had some unique wildlife here in the sense of birds. The rarest one being a an observation of a Sora, which is a wetland bird. Um, but again, as you can see by the boxes, tree swallows, bluebirds, and many other common species can be found around here. Actually, as I was walking up, a fox ran away from this area before I could get on it. So again, this is one of the main points to actually come to if you are coming or planning a visit to Colebrook. You never know what you're going to find and it will change with the various seasons. Okay, about three quarters of the way up the right side of the last field at Colebrook. You hopefully will find the white trail I met today. It needs a good brushing. Um, but this is one of the entrances into the woodlot. I would recommend that when you visit Colebrook, regardless, since even the perimeter trails are maintained by the farmers mowing, that it, you should probably wear pants so that you can protect your legs from potential ticks and other strikes against exposed skin because poison ivy is also prevalent in the field trails. Um, just for the precaution that the pant legs will provide. Um, but again, we'll head into the woods, see if there's any little bit of difference heading in. Um, again, the white signs are on a cherry tree if you've been watching the other videos. And this cherry tree is also showing some fruit forming. So again, we're heading onto the white trail, which is the back right corner of the property. Okay, just a short distance into the white trail. It does sort of open up a little bit. It's just the density of multiflora at the edge habitat. But there is a hidden creek that sometimes flows at Colebrook. It's what the pond actually drains into. Um, so it's a place, again, to potentially find some amphibians, um, possibility of a snake in the water, again, frogs, or even the bird species hanging out in an area provided by um, some water. Again, if you're seeing these ripples, this is the classic water strider that's sitting on the water. Um, it's not technically considered an aquatic insect. What it's doing is it's walking on the surface tension of the water because if you look at the four contact points of the feet, you'll see that they actually deform the water and make a small depression into the water. Um, another way of seeing that is look at their shadows if it's a bright enough day and you'll see rings around the edge of the feet um, because that's the distortion caused by um, the feet on the water tension and you can actually see that reflected in the shadow casting from the water strider. Okay, hopefully what you're seeing is the mattedness of the vegetation. Um, it's been padded down by water runoff. There's actually a drain through here on the trail. And you can see the force, hopefully, that the power of water has. Uh, actually, a little further down this drain is a wood remains of an old footpath or footbridge that was once tried to be established here, but the, the power of the water has carried it about 20 yards down the drain from the trail. And that's one of the reasons why the berms exist again in the fields because of the power of that water. I am officially on the orange trail, I should say, because that's what actually does the loop here in the woodlot. All 
All right, these white marks on the leaves is actually evidence of a bird perching in a tree above. As you can see, there's a bit of an opening, a dead tree above me, um, but it's white, what we refer to as whiting. Um, all birds do it. Um, proof usually is found after someone washes their car. Um, but again, this is one of the things we look for in winter time when one is out owling. Because owls have a favorite roost, they will often do their business while sitting there. And it will create this white trail mark that we try to use to navigate up into a tree to find the owl. In springtime, however, usually what the whiting we see is more so from the hawks um, sitting around as they are out in the woods hunting throughout the day. And it's usually only one squirt that usually is found um, because again, they're moving around as they search for their prey. So again, whiting is evidence of the predatory birds. Becomes more important in the winter season when one looks for an owl. I should mention about the agricultural crops. Again, um, the agricultural field is one of the means that the county uses to preserve the open space of the parkland by leasing it out to a farmer. We can preserve um, the open ground and not have every part of our par property be a woodland habitat. Um, some farmers do a commercial crop like the corn in front of me. Others will do a mulch hay and provide a grassland habitat that we can then establish with the farmer um, to promote wildlife as well. But please remember that if it is a commercial crop, it is not the county's crop, it is the farmer's. So as a visitor, you need to respect that commercial crop and not damage it. Besides corn, what you may also see is soybean, which is a much smaller plant, usually has a seed pod that contains um, four to five of the soybeans, and then a new up and coming crop that might be seen on county parkland is the sorghum, which is a stalk about half as tall as this corn um, with like a flower head sort of structure at the top of it. All of these are valuable commodities for the farmers and as I said they do need to be respected. You do not have permission to be walking out amongst or through um, the agro agricultural crop which is why you're limited to any perimeter trails that do exist around the said um, crop. As you can see, I'm back to the creek crossing um, where two of the agricultural fields exist and you have the, the trail between. There really is nothing to observe right now. I'm more or less just taking a shade break, but wanted to share some thoughts about Colebrook. I do admit that most of my visits to Colebrook are in the fall winter season where vegetation has died back and I don't have to worry about walking through an area that might be a little overgrown. Um, but because of that, Colebrook is one of the areas I recommend if we get a significant enough snowfall for the cross country skier or the snowshoer. But in springtime, when vegetation does have to be considered, I can't recommend the location for a great um, mountain bike ride. Um, you can hear plenty of different species of birds calling right now. Um, I'll, I've done, I think, most of them in other videos, so people could consider it a test. But I've heard song sparrow, cardinal, robin calling. Um, there's also been some field sparrows out in some of the agricultural areas. Um, but regardless, 
of the birds getting back to the snowshoeing um, cross-country skiing. Because Colebrook is rolling hills, it's a great place to get a cardio workout for those uh, recreational activities. Um, Colebrook does have a history um, being up in Tewksbury, also as a place to ride horses, and the parking lot is large enough to host the vehicle and trailer. So again, consider it as a possible extension for doing about three, four miles worth of horseback riding in one of the county parks.